recording. So usually it takes a second for attendees to pop in. There we go. Bruce is here. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm not sure if um I remember um, Jason messaging me that he had a conflict for one of the meetings and it might have been tonight, so he might not be here tonight. Just double check my, although I thought it was for the training, but. So many Jason. Hear me typing. Jason Dorney. Unfortunately, he'll be away for the first meeting. Um, yeah, okay. So I just wanted to make sure, verify that. And Bruce, I'll update our Zoom to get the Zoom invites corrected so that you and Jason get um, Zoom invites for webinars just like you did for the um, subcommittee meeting that was an oversight on my part. Right, I took it off the PowerPoint agenda. Perfect. All right, so um, we we are going to go ahead and get started tonight for the Conservation Commission meeting. Um, the first item on the agenda is to um, appoint a new chairperson because our um, previous chair. Uh, her term expired at the end of June. Um, Jen Fair's term expired and Fletcher's term expired. And also just so everyone knows, Cameron um, resigned as of um, oh. July 7th because she's moving out of state. Um, she got a job in Washington, D.C. So she's moving. Um, so does anybody want to make an appointment for a new chairperson this evening? I'd like to nominate Michelle. I second. Do I vote on this? You can abstain if you want. <laughs> you can vote, absolutely. <laughs> you can vote for yourself. Uh, okay, I appreciate the, uh, yeah, okay. I vote also for myself. <laughs> and I appreciate the support <laughs> my well, fellow commissioners. No normally, what would happen is somebody nominates you, Michelle, and then then Aaron, you're kind of facilitating yeah. this. You would say, are there any other nominees? Okay. Or, are anyone there... want to make a motion for anyone else? Any any other nominations for chairperson? Okay. So I'll just do a quick roll call since uh, we're doing this. Andre? Aye. Michelle? Aye. Alex? Aye. Bruce? Aye. Great, all in favor. So Michelle is is chair. Um, and then just quickly, does is there anybody who would like to nominate a vice chair or nominate themselves as vice chair? Okay. Um, so I I'm not sure that we necessarily need to do that immediately, but we should probably give that some thought just um, if anybody's interested or has questions about it. We and we should probably have a backup. Again, if we don't do it tonight, that's not a huge deal because Michelle's here, but in the future we might want to consider that. So all right. So I have, I have a question. Yes. Who's not here? Who's not here? Um Jason and Laura are not here. Jason Dorney and um, Laura Pagliarulo. Oh, by the way, just so everyone knows, um, I asked Alex if he could, um, well, we, we were talking about sort of my duties and one of the areas that I have a sort of Achilles heel is um, minutes because uh, I take written minutes, but typing them up for meetings has been a real challenge for me. I've had some intern assistance with that, but um, uh, Alex and I were talking about it, and he said he wouldn't mind taking down who the um, made makes motions and seconds and stuff for the record. So, um, just if we need, if a Alex is asking clarifying questions, that that could be why. So, just for, for everybody's knowledge on that. 
I did warn her I'm not a proficient note taker. <laughs> I'm. I said I'd volunteer for. I, I'm also still taking notes, but decisions just, and actions, but not how we got there. Awesome. It would be like after some after considerable discussion. <laughs> yeah. Rather than taking notes on the roadmap. Yeah, and that's completely fine, Alex. That's actually that's kind of how how I have had to do it anyway, is just to um, streamline yeah, things. The video is our administrative record. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, well, so congratulations, Michelle. Um, and uh, you want to take the reins here? Sure. I, I just want to comment that, um, I mean, I could easily nominate a vice chair just based on seniority or whatever, but I feel like some consent would be <laughs> would be appreciated. So if anybody has any volunteer comments, maybe talk to Aaron so we don't inadvertently nominate someone that might be not appreciative or reluctant. So that's my only comment there. Um, all right, so bear with me as I learn the ropes, but we'll go for this. Um, so comments from the chair, that's now me. So we're welcoming a uh, new CONCOM members. So we, we're short one, and I'm wondering if we should save introductions for the next meeting, or what do you think? I mean, do a round table or Bruce's, if I may speak. Um, Bruce participated in the site visit today. He's present, he's active, and um, I, I feel obliged to welcome him. Of course. So, welcome and thank you for your service, Bruce. Um, maybe we My could pleasure. just. Sorry? My pleasure. Um, do you want to just do a go around with like a couple sentences about our backgrounds and expertise just to put that uh, on the table? If, yeah. Um, I'm starting. Um, let's see. <clears throat> Recently, uh, the executive director of the Conway School of Landscape Design um, retired on July 8th, and Dave promised to fill up my calendar with lots of things to do. Mm -hmm. uh, that I did. Many, many years <laughs> ago, I got a master's in, in planning uh, from MIT and spent about I don't know, 20 years as a mediator and facilitator of public policy disputes, uh, largely in Washington, DC. Great, that sounds very helpful to us. Um, I'm just gonna go, who's next on my screen? Alex, do you wanna give us your? Sure, uh, it was a pleasure to meet you today on our site visit, by the way. Likewise. And um, I have, I joined the Conservation Commission last September, so I'm a newbie. And um, prior to that, I retired from the US Fish and Wildlife Service five years ago. And I had given my time to an Indian tribe in Maine and New Brunswick to restore a river up there. And <clears throat> so that eight species of sea run fish could go upstream again. And this is an exciting time for me because the turbines were turned off on the last day of June. The coffer dams are in and the building is being demolished. So it's the oldest hydroelectric project in Canada and uh, will open up 18 miles of river when it comes out. So that's um, been a five year project for me and it has put a bounce in my step. And that's I, amazing. I have, uh, yeah. I um, have thoroughly enjoyed being on the Conservation Commission. It gives me an opportunity to see uh, a lot of Amherst. I know how to get around, but I'm pretty handicapped because I never learned the names of the streets. <laughs> so this forces me to learn the streets. And also as part of the Land Use Committee, I plan to visit a great deal of the property that is uh, under the care of the town so I can get to know it. So um, I look forward to that. Congratulations on the dam removal. And Thank uh, you. I'm with you on the street names. <laughs> Having grown up here, I just go without knowing. I couldn't give directions to anybody. <laughs> OK, Andre? All right. Um, I 
let's see, I've been on the Conservation Commission for a bit over a year, maybe a year and a quarter or so. Um, originally, I moved to Amherst as a senior in high school back in uh, 1983 uh, and uh, worked for U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service uh, for 20 uh, 28, 20 bunch of years, if you would. I was a park ranger before that with National Park Service. Uh, I was an inspector with uh, a wildlife inspector and then a special agent for uh, 22 years. Uh, I've been retired for about uh, four and a half years or so, and I'm currently a state park ranger. Um, it's great to be a part of uh, a, a, a part of the Conservation Commission. Uh, we're you know we're uh, uh, ensuring that uh, while that uh, wetlands are protected uh, to protect the uh, the whole town and uh, everyone in the uh, in the state. Um, yeah, let's see. Uh, my, you know, I uh, one of it's kind of interesting, Alex, uh, what you said. But one of the uh, uh, bigger uh, type cases that I've had, and then I had a, a, another big one after that with the same thing is on glass eels uh which uh need you know which are stopped essentially at that first upstream dam and uh, that's where people are catching them illegally and stuff but um anyway it uh it, it, it's nice to see that uh that your work is uh complementing uh, some of some of what i did but, that's great. Thanks, Andre. Um, I am not retired. <laughs> uh, I work for a West Coast Land Trust um, in the conservation and management of endangered species and habitats, um, more specifically um, mitigation, conservation easements, long-term financial planning for stewardship, um, and just we're from Washington to California. So I've been on the commission for two years about, and this is my way of being involved with the community and, and doing conservation at a local level. So that is really special to me. Um, I, I was gonna skip the staff, but do you guys feel compelled to, have you already talked to Bruce or do you wanna just- Oh, I know these away? people. All right, all right. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sounds good. Um, <laughs> All right, so um, Dave, do you have any reports to share? Sure, I'll just do a quick couple of updates um, before you all launch into your main agenda. Um, you know, we continue uh, summer being what it is with the rains and, and uh, some intermittent sunshine. We continue to do uh, some management out there. Um, you know, Puffer Spond is taking quite a bit of time. It, it remains a very popular destination for thousands of people every year. Um, we have a very limited staff this summer because we are we are down uh, assistant land manager uh, position is still open. So again, if you know anybody that's on a rolling basis um, until that position is hired, we will keep it on our website. So um, please keep the word out there. We're interviewing now for assistant land manager. We've hired two summer staff. So they'll be out there doing um, trail maintenance. Uh, trying to keep up with, you know, um, invasives kind of overrunning the KC Trail and the Robert Frost Trail, uh, collaborating with volunteers and with Kestrel Trust on, um, you know, annual maintenance of trails. Uh, we continue to do water testing at Puffer's Pond. Um, we were doing quite well until that series of rainstorms. And then last week, uh, the pond failed the, um, the, uh, the, the water testing standards that are required by the state. And I, um, I'm actually doing the testing right now to help out our very limited staff. So uh, we do the testing on Wednesday morning, and then we get the test back on Thursday. It takes 24 hours really to culture them, and then we post them on the website. Um, we have gotten some feedback that the actual lab results are a little confusing to people. So I just sent out an email this afternoon, and we're going to try to clarify some of that on the website. Um, so, um, you know... What happens is when you get significant rain, you know, um, bacteria and other sediments are washed into puffers from the Cushman Brook and other tributaries, and uh, those those levels of E. coli um, get too high for us to safely recommend swimming there. So um, we're also going to be looking long term at seeing if we can work with the university to maybe 
dig a little deeper into what are some of the, the causes of the E. coli situation in puffers. So we're working on that. Um, let's see. Um, we may be, we were hoping to bring you um, uh, an amendment to a, a CR tonight, but um, for a variety of reasons, legal review and others, we, we decided to postpone that a meeting. But suffice it to say that there is, um, there's an, an, a new IRS um, requirement for uh, some CRs, conservation restrictions, where uh, owners got donations um, for those CRs. Um, we have we have one that is held by the Conservation Commission. It's off of uh, Flat Hills Road um, and Market Hill, um, and it just wasn't ready for prime time tonight. So it'll it'll probably come to you next meeting. And we've talked to a number of attorneys, and and we think that's going to be fine. And there's no there's no content amendment. This is really to deal with the IRS um, requirement. So Michelle, perhaps you're dealing with that on the West Coast as well. Um, yeah, I attended a webinar with a bunch of lawyers about that. I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, it didn't really affect. Yeah. So well, it doesn't it doesn't page. change the, the 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 intent of the CR at, at all. No, yeah. the conditions. So. Um, I've talked to a number of lawyers who honestly don't think this is even necessary, but out of an abundance of caution, we, we, we will likely bring you an amendment to a CR uh, next meeting. Um, let's see what else is going on. Um, Aaron, I think you're going to talk a little bit about uh, the upcoming grant for Hickory Ridge, so I'll leave that to you. Um, the land use policy uh, update, perhaps you could give as well, Aaron. The only other thing I wanted to give the commission a quick update on Hickory Ridge. There's certainly been a lot of um, inquiries by email and phone about what's happening at Hickory Ridge with the Hickory Ridge Solar. And really briefly, um, I think, um, I'm not sure if anyone from uh, uh, Hickory from AMP is on this call, but um, very quickly, um, um, our relationship with AMP and, and now the new, the new parent company that has purchased AMP has been um, really uh, uh, quite good, uh, you know, um, moving forward on this project. Aaron has been working very closely with them. They've been responsive. They've been receptive. Um, we have not, one of the reasons for the uh, project not moving as quickly as perhaps some people might I've thought it would be is that we have the town has not issued a building permit for the the actual um, erecting of the arrays yet, and the reason for that is is uh, Aaron and other staff working for the planning department and inspections department have been uh, working closely with the AMP team on uh, some of the specifics having to do with um, the design and installation of the battery pad, battery storage. Um, and the actual uh, final, um, you know, uh, 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 design elements of the installation of the pole-mounted solar that is going to go in the two arrays. Um, but I want to make it clear that, you know, so far working with AMP, working with Dynamic, um, they have been responsive and uh, to our concerns and getting us information. They are also working through a few outstanding questions with the Natural Heritage Program. Um, and that really has to do with the timeline for the project. And, and in short, what happened was, you know, the project was supposed to kick off much sooner. There were delays uh, caused primarily by um, um, uh, shortages of, of uh, solar materials all over the world, um, supply chain issues. And so this, the, the project timeline got put back. So they're now working through that. Aaron and I are part of that conversation. Uh, once uh, the company and uh, the Natural Heritage Program agree on that timeline, then the uh, building permit will be issued. So um, I don't want people to read into that situation anything more. Those are the reasons why things have slowed down a little bit. But again, they've been uh, they've been uh, receptive and and providing us information as we've as, as we've gone along. I don't know, Aaron, if you want to add anything to that. I'll, I, I will uh, defer to you on it, Dave. Yeah. So, um, I would expect a building permit to be issued in the next couple of weeks, and they'll be back uh, on the site. 
um, weather permitting, of course, it's a little soggy out there. Um, so those were the quick updates that I had. I know Aaron wants to update on a, a grant opportunity out there at Hickory, um, but why don't I stop there if there are any questions on Buffers Pond or trail work or, oh, I also wanted to mention, I'm sorry, trail work and Buffers Pond. We have had um, a couple of uh, concerns raised about a, a small set of stairs at Buffers Pond. If you're familiar with Buffers Pond, there's a set of stairs that goes from State Street down to a small bridge and then out to the main beach at, at Puffers. Um, I would say there are maybe eight steps and they're really significantly deteriorating, uh, deteriorated. And um, we've had a couple of seniors who have expressed concern about those. I talked to Aaron and what we'd like to do is basically replace them in kind in that location. So um, I, I think we're gonna move forward with that. We would probably, get some estimates as to what that would cost. I have some uh, capital money that I hope to apply to that. It's not gonna be a huge project, um, but uh, just wanted to let you know that we would try to address those um, as quickly as possible. Um, so I think I'll stop there. Thanks, Dave. Um, so other than that, we had our first land use subcommittee meeting on July 11th. And I think as part of it, we're just sort of an administrative and planning session, um, but we do need to officially um, and state Bruce to that subcommittee. Um, so how do we, we nominate him to it? Yes, okay, I nominate Bruce, can I do it? No, okay, looking for a nomination for Bruce Sedman to the land management subcommittee. Uh, I move to uh, nominate Bruce uh, to the subcommittee for land use. Andre with the motion. Is Alex still with us? Maybe we should come back to it. Well, Bruce can second it. Yeah, we need four members to vote because um, we've only got a quorum tonight. Um, we can try later. Okay. Well, do you want? Did you have any more comments um, following Dave? Aaron? I'm here. I. Oh. Oh. I just, I've been typing notes. Oh, awesome. Uh -oh. I put myself on mute and I couldn't get, there was so much on the screen and it took me a while to get back. <laughs> um, I second. All right, Alex, with a second. Um, Andre. Aye. Bruce. Aye. Alex. Aye. And I'm an aye. Awesome. So we have a few minutes. Do you want to talk about a couple, like a, another business item? Because our first hearing is is uh, going to be continued anyways. Did you want to briefly talk about the grant? Sure. Yeah. Um, so I apologize because it was I was very late getting um, in your packets a little bit of information on the grant, um, but. I mean, and just I'll give a general overview because I'm not sure it's been a while since we've talked about the mitigation and restoration efforts at Hickory Ridge um, and sort of the, the trail project at Hickory Ridge. So Dave talked a lot about the, the solar project that um, AMP slash, I hope I'm getting this right, Pure Sky um, are working on um, the development project, which was permitted back in 2019. Um, however, we have two grants that the town of Amherst currently have um, that they're administering. Uh, one is a CDBG grant for a, um, a multi-use path to connect the um, sort of uh, northern community of the site or the community to the north of the site um, down to the village center um, in South Amherst or yeah, South Amherst Center. Um, and then also there is a grant, a park grant for a handicap accessible trail loop, which would be located in the southwest corner of Hickory. Um, so we have these these new trail projects and we have spent a um, significant amount of time reviewing our existing trail system, the proposed trail system, and in conjunction with that, a substantial mitigation plan, as well as a significant restoration plan at Hickory. Um, that includes removal of upwards of 
10 culverts, um, which are currently constricting wetlands, intermittent streams, perennial streams on the site, um, fill that was placed in wetlands that needs to be removed in order for wetlands to function and connect to the Fort River, um, as well as uh, footbridges um, to connect the trail and um, basically you know, repair degraded areas. So we're working on that. Um, and we have the US, US Fish and Wildlife who've kindly offered to assist us on a lot of the culvert removals, which is fantastic. And um, we have been working with Mass Fish and Wildlife. Um, Todd Richards uh, has been a part of those conversations. Mike Jones has been a part of those conversations for this grant called America the Beautiful. And the idea being to do um, basically riverine restoration of the Fort River and significant riverine restoration as well as study of the Fort River. So doing like a hydrologic study, um, there's a lot of debris and material that's dumped on the banks of the Fort River, um, concrete riprap um, material that was placed probably over the course of the, the golf course's operation. And so a lot of this work would basically restore the banks of the river, um, and repair work, potential drainage improvements, um, like removing potential old tile drains or potential old um, uh, irrigation uh, lines that are that are on the site. So we aren't, sh you know, with, this is at the grant application phase, and they are hustling to get this in by, I believe it's July 20th. So they're looking for letters of support from all parties involved, and one of the parties would be the Amherst Conservation Commission, since this site is in um, in Amherst and within the CONCOM's jurisdiction. Obviously, right now, it's not under the care, custody, and control of the Conservation Commission, but portions of it may be in the future, and I think we can all agree to the importance of this site and the sensitivity of the site in terms of resource areas. Um, so, I don't know if anybody's had a chance to look at those materials, the abstract or the email from Todd Richards, but basically um, we have a, a, a draft letter that Todd sent us and I could sort of wordsmith that in order to um, express the Conservation Commission's support for the grant process. That sounds great, Erin. Do you need signatures on that or? Probably need your signature. Okay, and it sounds like there's a quick timeline for it. So yeah, I, I will. Send. I'll probably finalize the draft of it tomorrow and get it to you for signature, Michelle, right away. Great. Exciting news at Hickory Ridge. Um, okay. Is there anything else or should we move into our hearings? If we could just add just for the commission, but also those for those participants in attendance, um, the focus, the main focus of the grant, as Aaron said, is kind of in-stream restoration, um, culvert removal, removing bituminous asphalt in the floodplain, things like that. Um, we need to keep in mind that Aaron and I, working with the planning department, we will likely present a PowerPoint presentation to the town council sometime in the fall with kind of the broad overview of where we are with Hickory Ridge planning, which will include in-stream restoration, upland restoration, obviously the solar project, um, what parts of the pro property we would propose for permanent preservation, uh, the ADA trail, the connector trail north-south, um, perhaps an amphitheater, and then also ideas for reuse of the upland area where the clubhouse uh, is currently. Um, and, you know, one of the ideas uh, that the town is looking at is whether that area where the clubhouse is would be suitable for a South Amherst fire station. Um, so that area um, hopefully will be cleared of the of the clubhouse is quite the liability. I've talked about that in the past. But again, I wanted to kind of put it in the context of there's other planning going on around Hickory Ridge that the Conservation Commission, the planning board, and of course the town council would be involved with that information will reach you and the town council and other boards and committees later on this fall. The, the focus of this grant is really kind of really in the riparian zone for the most part or in those those resource areas that Aaron mentioned. So just wanted to give a little clarification there. Hey, off topic, excuse me. Um, you mentioned the firehouse. 
and it's not a concom issue, but I'm just curious if that would also include a new home for the DPW. Um, we are not considering um, uh, Hickory Ridge for a, a DPW or the DPW site. In That's our anal in our analysis, um, the That's all I needed to know. Yeah, the available upland at Hickory is actually quite limited. So um, there's yeah. there's just a small number of upland acres outside of wetland and other resource areas. So, but a, a fire station would definitely fit. We know that for sure. Yeah, no, I didn't want to get off diverted, but I just curious. No, it's a good question. Thank you. So, in terms of the letter of support. Um, Everybody's okay with the letter of support. Um, nobody objects to us issuing a letter of support. Okay. I think it's a good thing. Awesome. Okay. Great. Great. Um, okay. So before I jump in, maybe I should just alert people to the fact that we're um, continuing 46 Faring Street. So if you're here for that, it's being continued to July 26 at 740. Um, then that's 46 bearing. Okay, um, so hearings. So general procedure for fairness to all applicants, each hearing has 20 dedicated minutes on the agenda. The structure will be five minute presentations by the applicant or representative, five minutes of comment from staff, five minutes of public comment or two per person, and five minutes for commissioners. Um, all plan revisions are required by Friday prior to the meeting at noon. If they're not in, that might hold us up. And for presenters and members of the public, please clearly state your name, address, affiliation, um, and any preferred pronouns if you have them. So our first one up is tie and bond for Eversource Energy to propose equipment and switch gear upgrades within the 70,000, 17K substation. Expansion of the substation fence line at 246 College Street, 14B, 173, and installation of 21 manholes and three distribution poles within the roadway along College Street from the intersection of Northampton Road and South Pleasant Street to 246 College Street. So um, where this one is to be continued. So unless there's any questions from commissioners, I'm looking for a motion to continue the public hearing for 246 College Street, notice of intent to 726-23 at 7.30 p.m. So moved. Second. Alex with the motion, Andre with the second. Um, Andre. Aye. Bruce. Aye. Alex. Aye. And I'm an aye. Okay, um, next up, is it 7.35? Yes. Um, so this is the notice of intent for SWCA on behalf of the University of Massachusetts for the construction of a gravel parking lot and associated stormwater structures on the 100 foot, oh, sorry, I did things out of order, buffer zoning, <laughs> zone to boarding vegetated wetland at lot 13 Olympia Drive. Um, so I need to open this hearing, yes? Yes. Okay. This public hearing is now called to order. The hearing is being held as required by the provisions of Chapter 131, Section 40 of the General Laws of the Commonwealth and Act relative to the protection of wetlands as most recently amended in Article 3.31, Wetlands Protection under the Town of Amherst General Bylaws. And again, this is Notice of Intent for SWCI on behalf of the University of Massachusetts. So we have a for all, okay. Is, um, do we have a representative or are we, okay. Yep, I'm pulling Kristen in right now, Michelle. I think she is our only representative who's present on behalf of the applicant, but if there's anybody else that I've missed, please raise your hand. Hi, Kristen. Hi, everyone. Sorry, it takes a minute for the for me to rejoin. Um, Hi everybody, I'm Kristen McDonough. I'm a certified wildlife biologist and professional wetland scientist with SWCA Environmental Consultants. And I am representing the University of Massachusetts here to present a notice of intent for associated with the expansion of a gravel parking lot called Lot 13, which is located north of Olympia Drive in Amherst. Um, I, I, I know I have a brief presentation, but should I just pull up the plan really quick? Is that cool if I share my screen? Yes, let me just um, enable that for you, Kristen. Hold on one moment. You should be good to go. Thank you.
this is the plan here. Um, so uh, this notice of intent is a buffer zone only project and it is being filed for work within jurisdictional areas under the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Amherst bylaw. Um, the file number has been issued for this and it was uh, 0890718. Um, just as a quick refresher, UMass filed a comprehensive notice of intent for operation and maintenance in 2019, and that wetlands file number is 0890647. And that outlines several special conditions related to ongoing operation and maintenance across campus, including for parking lots. We communicated with the commission in February 2023 requesting consideration on whether this parking lot expansion would qualify as minor buffer zone work under the umbrella comprehensive NOI and the commission notified the applicant that this would require a new filing, hence this new NOI application. Uh, as part of this NOI, the applicant is proposing an expanded gravel parking lot area for students located north of Olympia that would be approximately 1.1 acres of parking plus um, stormwater management. And you can see there are three stormwater facilities here, this one, this one, and this one. Woodard and Curran, the project engineers, did the design and stormwater report. Um, existing conditions uh, within the limit of work include an upland forest consisting of eastern white pine and uh, northern red oak with glossy buckthorn, multiflora rose, and Asiatic bittersweet in the understory. Um, SWCA did an initial delineation as part of that comprehensive NOI in 2019. We did a redelineation on January 18th in 2023, and we double checked that delineation again on April 12th, 2023, during the growing season, and to document vernal pool activity within a portion of standing water at the western end of the wetland, which is not shown on this current um, scale. It's further off to the left, um, to the west. We identified two vegetated wetlands within 100 feet of the parcels. And um, the project is located outside the 50 foot bordering vegetated wetland buffer zone and outside the 100 foot vernal pool buffer zone limits. Uh, the NOI was submitted prior to soil test pits, but the applicant has since completed test pit investigations and analyses. Um, and given the results made a minor change to the plans recently, we just received a plan update on Friday afternoon last week. Um, the Revisions have not changed the limit of disturbance at all. The only changes were a reduction in the amount of parking lot area. So basically this fire retention pond grew, parking used to go up to here. So the limit of disturbance is the same as the original NOI application filing. It's just the parking lot has shrunk a little bit. So I think the original parking area was 1.3 acres and now it's 1.1 acre or something like that. Um, we did walk the site today, SWCA, the Amherst Wetlands agent and two commissioners were present. Um, I was not communicated uh, that there were any issues with the wetland delineation. However, I was notified that there was an issue with the um, limit of disturbance not being clearly identified in the field within areas jurisdictional to the commission. Uh, so I recognize we can't close the hearing tonight. We will get the limits of disturbance clearly identified within jurisdiction in the next week, certainly before the next hearing date. Uh, but I did wanna be present tonight just to open the hearing and answer any questions the public or the commission may have about the project. Thanks, Kristen. Aaron, do you wanna give us um, the comments? Um, so let me see. Um, I haven't really had a chance to review the updated materials or the test pit logs. Um, I would just, uh, you know, we I only just provided those to the commission on the 11th, which was yesterday. And um, so I, my, my request would be that we um, postpone my report until the um, July 26th meeting. Um, and also that we have another site visit on that date. Uh, so that we can go out and take photos of the limit of work and potentially have another site visit if commissioners wish to attend. Um, other than that, I don't have any comments. I just pulled up, sorry to interrupt. I just pulled up, these are the test pit locations. And I, again, I sent this to you, I think on Friday. Um, 
I might have sent you the figure on the test pit locations earlier, but I didn't send you the report and the revised plans until Friday around four o'clock. So it was after the noon o'clock threshold there. Alex? Uh, Kristen, could you uh, just inform those who are here where the vernal pool is located on this draw? I know it's off the drawing, but just yeah, sure. So, and what you found there. That's a great question. Thank you so much for bringing that up. So the so here's the limit of the wetland right here, the A wetland. Um, we're 100 feet out. So this is where the new parking lot is proposed over here. This purple polygon is standing water. Um, and there are photos in the notice of intent. Um, we did look at it today in the field. This is a pretty in my opinion, classic looking vernal pool. And we've had a lot of rain recently. So it was really evident in the field today. Although my suspicion is that it doesn't typically hold water this late in the year. And there were no spotted salamanders out there, which would indicate a longer hydro period. Um, I went out there in April and I found about 60 wood frog egg masses and they were all kind of in a communal cluster right here at the uh, north northeastern corner of that PVP boundary. So this, this is not notified or identified, excuse me, on the natural heritage database. Um, it just kind of had that look when I was out there in January. So we went back and gave it a second look. Um, it's within the BBW. And so on the plans, just to kind of flip back uh, to the plans. So this, you can barely see it, but this hundred foot boundary is from the vernal pool basin limits. And then this 50 foot wetland limit is from the BBW. So the vernal pool is inside the BBW. If that answers your question. Chris? The question almost certainly reflects the fact that this is my first meeting. Um, but when I look at the picture you just showed, and having been out there, I have to ask, is yet another parking lot really needed? I mean, I mean it's it's student parking, so I, I can't speak to the applicants need for additional. I, I don't work for UMass, so I don't really know what their what their needs are, but I, I imagine that their. Their uh, their student body is continually growing. Um, <laughs> human population continues to grow. <laughs> and they just need to expand parking. Okay, um, my question remains, but. Okay, um, do we have any public comment? Just please raise your hand. Okay, I see none. Um, are there any other commissioners that have any other comments about this? Raise your hand still up. I assume it's just oh, hanging sorry. right there. Okay. All right. It doesn't look like that. Um, so it sounds like we're continuing this um, for the need of uh, delineation in the field and potentially another site visit. I do want to just, while I've got you here in a public hearing, um, Aaron, you had a question in the field about pretreatment for stormwater, and I would refer you to page 2 2 of the stormwater report in the notice of intent. Um, for if you don't want to wade through the 350 pages. Just okay. zero in on that page. And that answers the question that you had in the field. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, unless anybody else has any comments, we're looking for a motion to continue the public hearing for Lot 13 Olympia Drive, Notice of Intent Application to 72623 at 735 p.m. So moved. Second. Andre with the motion. Alex with the second. Bruce. Aye. Andre. Aye. Alex. Aye. Aye. And I'm an aye. Okay. Um, so this next hearing, there's the applicant requested a continuance. Do we, we don't open it then? We just need a motion to continue it, correct? Uh, yeah, so this hearing has already been opened. Right, um, okay. And just to give a little bit of an update on this one, um, this is a 46 Fairing Street site. Um, just 
today, it was either today or late yesterday afternoon, um, I was in communication with Tom Reedy and they have um, some HydroCAD calculations that they've put together for the lot as well as um, a um, hydrologist who submitted a some comments on the proposal um, as far as the changes to drainage on the site with the proposed single family house lot. I'm going to make a note to upload those materials to the website um, uh, so that the members of the public can see those in advance of the um, July 26th meeting. Um, Again, they came in yesterday afternoon, so staff hasn't had a chance to review those yet. Um, and I uh, I know the commission hasn't looked at them and the public hasn't looked at them, so we wanted to give everybody adequate time to review those materials before um, they're discussed in a public meeting. So we'll, we'll shoot for the um, July 26th meeting for further discussion on that. Erin, I'm, I'm sorry. I... I missed what it is that they submitted. Um, they submitted um, what are called hydrocad calculations, which are essentially hydrologic calculations that review the pre and post um, drainage, pre and post um, runoff from the site. Yep. They, they also have a letter from a hydrologist that was submitted and um, they may have some minor plan changes that are in association with the um, information from the, uh, the engineer and the um, hydrologist who commented on the project. And that follows from our last meeting with them where yes. we had a discussion about only so much water falls on the lot. Right. And Jen had some things to say, and there was a request made. And so I assume that what they submitted is an answer to that request. That is correct. Okay, got it. Any other comments? Okay. Um, then I'm looking for a motion. I move to continue the public hearing for 49 Faring Street. Notice of intent to 72623 at 740 p.m. Second. Andre, the motion, Bruce of the second. Alex? Aye. Andre? Aye. Bruce? Aye. And I'm an aye. Okay, I see that Kristen's still hanging in there. Thanks, Kristen. <laughs> Do we need to let her out of the room or I'm not sure if I have the controls? Uh, let me just see. Sorry, I'm logging out anyways. Thanks, everyone. Have a <laughs> Bye, Kristen. Thanks. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I, I don't know if I can actually, this is what's, okay. this is what's interesting I is I don't know if you can actually remove somebody out of the room without kicking them out of the meeting. They have to just excuse themselves, I, I think. Okay. Don't want to be rude. Okay. Um, so that's it for our hearings. Um, let's see. We discussed the Okay, we have a minor administrative change request for 191 Pomeroy Lane. Do you want yes. to jump into that? Okay. Yes, and um, I I had hoped to be a little more prepared with with figures to share. And um, should I need to, I I can do that. This is just another sort of like other business items that are on our agenda um, for this evening. Um, I'm just going to flip back so I can see your faces. Um, so I want to just give a little, a, a little. Dave talked about this on the front end of the of the call a little bit. Um, the previous conversation that we had with AMP, Pure Sky, um, we approved several modifications to their plans. Um, one of the conditions on that approval was relative to the equipment pads, um, and basically required that I have a review and sort of approval authority relative to the um, containment that is being used on the equipment pads. So I reviewed the equipment pad containment. We um, went through a couple iterations of, of containment options and have arrived at a agreeable containment solution for the, um, the pads. Also, um, as we have gone through the sort of final construction set. Um, these are like the 100% design um, drawings for the installation of the, the um, solar facility. 
Full of batteries. Uh, um, no, this is for the actual panels themselves, okay. for the solar array themselves. Um, so the original approval of the um, footings for the solar panels was a, a driven post into the ground. Um, and with the that was with a um, a fixed um, a fixed position panel. I think they're called fixed tilt. I'm not, I'm not going to get the the lingo correct, but the panels um, over the course of our approval process changed from a fixed panel to a tracking panel. So a panel that basically follows the sun throughout the course of the day. Um, so the design changed slightly in the interim from the original design. Um, when when the final 100% design drawings came in, it included a a footing which was a little bit more substantial. So it's it's an 18 inch concrete footing, and so I inquired with Amp Pure Sky about that because it's a it's very different from the driven post that was approved on the original 2019 drawings um, in conversations with with Lawrence Cook who's the um, project manager for Pure Sky um, this is what I've come to find out is basically that their first their first um, preference would be to continue to use a driven post for the solar arrays. So no change essentially from the originally approved um, design concept that came before the commission and was approved by the commission. However, if when they're driving those, um, those posts, they hit any resistance or have a problem with any of the posts, the next option that they would do is do the driven post with sheets on the side, which would essentially provide additional support for the driven post. So that's their second preferred option. And again, that's if they run into trouble with the driven post. Now, if they really, really run into trouble, like they're driving a post and they hit resistance. And again, we don't anticipate much here being a, uh, <laughs> a floodplain here for the, for the um, Fort River, but, if they hit a glacial erratic or you know bedrock or something underneath while they're pile driving, then they may need to, as a third alternative, put in a poured concrete um, foundation. Again, it would be a um, a last option, but that is something that they may need to do structurally if the if the post isn't um, adequate to support the the array. So the the problem with that, or the reason that I'm bringing this before you tonight, um, is because dr um, drilling the 10 foot deep, 18 inch um, concrete footing is a change from the original design. I spoke with AMP and I said, how do you want to handle this? Do you want to wait until you're actually doing the install and see if you run into trouble and you need um, to come before the commission with a modification at that point. And their feeling was basically they'd rather bring it to the commission now and, and just present it to the commission so that when they're in the field, if they need to modify and, and include one of these concrete footings, they can just do it on the fly as a sort of field change. Um, and, and I guess like, you know, as a staff person reviewing these, my initial thought was, well, if they're doing one or two of these footings and it's just like a rare encounter, it's not really that big of an issue, right? But if they end up having to do all of them <laughs> with a concrete footing, then it's a pretty substantial change from what was originally approved. So as an overabundance of caution, we've brought it to you to bring it to your attention. Um, call out that distinction in the submitted construction set to you and um, basically make sure that you're aware of it. The um, biggest concern I have with the um, placing of the, the concrete um, footing that's different from the driven pile is that there'd be a significant amount more spoils coming out from the, you know, um, augering of the, the holes for these changed footing. And so really, it's a matter of discussing with the commission, if they do end up having to auger in and, and um, do a, a concrete poured footing, what would you like for them to do with the spoils? Um, 
so before we jump into that discussion, the other point I wanted to just clarify that I clarified with Lawrence is that um, one question I had was whether the top of the, the concrete footing would be um, flush with the ground and or if it would extend above the ground because the concern there being that if it did come up above the ground it would be potential additional fill in the floodplain. In this case um, from speaking with Lawrence you wouldn't actually even see the concrete footing it would be either at ground level or below ground level. So um, I don't think that that presents an issue in terms of a resource area alteration with the change in footing but the what to do with the spoils does present a question to the board. So I wanted to make sure I give you an opportunity to discuss that. Okay, I see that Lawrence is in um, the audience. Do we wanna bring him in for a clarification? Okay. So he, he, he can come in, he's available okay. for questions, but- All right, um, we can talk first then? Yes. Okay, Alex? Yeah, it's just for clarification. It's within the floodplain, but it's my understanding that the solar arrays are a long ways from the river. So um, erosion of the spoils could be easily contained. And to me, it sounds a lot like putting in a phone pole. And I've seen right out my window, um, phone poles put in with an auger and they, they, took away a lot of the of the spoils. Where mm -hmm. they put them, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and there was a small amount left that was piled up around the pole, uh, just waiting for things mm -hmm. to compact. Mm -hmm. So um, asking them to haul it away, it has to be disposed somewhere and I would, venture to say that it could be disposed of right there around the hole, so long as it is um, seedable and will not erode. Am I, am I on track? The, the only comment I have- It's actually a question. Yeah. As you were talking, I'm sitting here saying, aside from a change in the plan, what's the impact? Right. So. Um, my only concern would be if if they hit resistance on a pole that was in the floodplain, we wouldn't want them taking the spoils from the drilling in that specific area and depositing it in the floodplain. In that specific case, um, I would suggest to the board that they either um, relocate the spoils to an upland area or take the spoils off site. But I am in agreement with you, Alex, that if it's in an upland area that's outside of Conservation Commission jurisdiction, I'd have no problem with them keeping the spoils um, around the, the drill spot. Yeah, so that's gonna be several cubic feet of spoils per hole mm -hmm. if it's 10 feet deep and 18 inches wide. I, th I think those are the dimensions you gave. That's, that's, I don't, I didn't do the math, but it's a cubic yard or two. Um, it would be nice if they could just simplify things and dispose of them on site if it's in the upland and um, all out of way if it's in the floodplain, unless it can be well contained. Dave? Yeah, Michelle, I was just going to suggest that since we have the project manager here, um, you know, a conversation with him, I think, would be fruitful here, you know, to getting some feedback, but let's, let's hear from Lawrence. Um, um, he does, this is his job. So um, I was just going to suggest bringing him in and, and uh, he's heard this feedback, and I'm sure there are practical, practical, uh, uh, solutions, approaches. Yeah, thank you all, um, and uh, nice to be speaking to to you all again. Erin um, got most of it correct. Um, the so what we have is th the first course is that we've got a driven post system. Uh, now the the post would have to be driven between fifteen and twenty feet in the ground, depending on whether it's an outside post or an inside post. There's varying depths that they have to be driven to. Um, we've done a geotech. Uh, on the site where we went 18 foot down um, in multiple locations, didn't hit anything. But as Erin correctly 
pointed out, it's Massachusetts, we're glacial, there could be erratics, there could be anything um, that, that wasn't picked up in that. So um, if, if we can't drive the post in, there are two uh, uh, remediation e efforts. The one was the slip sheet and the, um, uh, the correction there is it's more about frost heave. Um, so uh, we're, we're concerned that with frost heave in the middle of winter, you've got a significant upward uh, force and the, the slip sheets um, uh, eliminate that point uh, so we can go with a shallower foundation down to about between 10 and 15 foot. If we hit an obstruction that is going to require us to have a 10 foot post or below, we would need to use concrete in that. It's not one that we're expecting. Um, and, and so it would be a, 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 a method of last resort rather than anything that we would prefer to do. Um, the other question we could do with the spoils is that we, we can stockpile them in an upland area, see how much we have, and then we can uh, either decide to, to, to if it's just um, mostly topsoil, we can spread that around. If there's any rock that needs to come out, we can either um, cart it off site or stockpile it. You're going to be putting a walking trail around. Um, maybe you'll need to fill in some areas or anything like that. We could make it available for the town um, if, if that's required, or we can spread and remove off site um, and, and properly dispose of it. Um, so that they usually we would uh, find somewhere within the town of Amherst um, to dispose of it because uh, a lot of towns don't like soil from within the town being moved to other towns. Um, so we it could get moved to a yard where it could be separated into loam and rock and uh, and whatever comes out and then uh, reused um, or uh, sold at that point from uh, from the yard. Okay, thanks, Lawrence. Commissioners, any other comments? Um, I have a comment and a question, perhaps. Um, one, I'm fine with the so the spoils being moved to an upland site, but I would be interested in maybe identifying a previously disturbed area to put them so that it's not just getting dumped on something like nice, you know, yeah. goldenrod habitat or something. So. I mean, you were talking, Dave, about potential sites for building, or um, as Lawrence mentioned, there might be trail systems. So maybe finding an upland site that could uh, take the spoils without any impact to existing vegetation and habitat would be something I'd be interested in. And then if they and they fill, they do do the borings and they fill. I mean, that's not going to be decommissioned, right? So that will be a permanent filling of concrete in the project area. Just the, the clarification. The the concrete would be removed as part of the decommissioning. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Michelle, if I could, to your first point, um, you know, we could certainly work with Lawrence and his team. One idea, and, and again, this is in the event that option A or option B does not work, if they have to go to option C and and, and do more significant uh, uh, holes and, and that fill, that spoil, we could um, we could store that on the bituminous asphalt near the um, near the near the uh, clubhouse, and then we could work with Lawrence and his team as to, you know, what would we want to do with that? Do we need it for trail uh, leveling or you know uh, edging of the trails as we as we create those trails? And then you know if it's if it's decent soil. Could that be used in one of the trail projects? Perhaps it could, and it could save us money. Um, but there's many options for that. DPW often has need for, you know, clean fill, so that's an option too. But we could offer the um, the already degraded parking lot as a possibility of that. Right now, we're using part of the parking lot, as you probably know, for staging for the um, roundabout. And that'll be over, I would say, in 45 to 50 days, that'll be over and that parking lot will be returned to its former glory of a 60-year-old parking lot. <laughs> that sounds but like a good solution. With, yeah. we, we can work with Lawrence and, and uh, um, Pure Sky on, on that, if, if yeah, that's I mean, the wish. We're going to have a kind of six to eight month presence on site while we're working and constructing this. So uh, anything that comes and most of this all happens in the, the early stages as well. So it would be available within the first couple of months of the project. Um, what we could do is because I wouldn't want to leave a pile of soil over by the clubhouse and just let the town deal with it. What we could do is uh, we could monitor how much it is and then see how much it is. And then we could probably 
Um, we could leave it there. If we were off site, we could uh, provide a, uh, um, the, the funds to the town that if you didn't need it, then you could dispose of it with that money. Um, and uh, so that you're not left holding the uh, holding the can uh, on a on a pile of soil and rocks in the in the parking lot. Chris, I was just going to encourage. There's lots of options and lots of maybes in all this. I would just encourage every effort be made to not increase the construction footprint, if at all possible. Um, because you start talking about spreading things around and then that may change that. So just constraining the, the construction footprint overall would be my concern. Thanks, Chris. Alex? Yeah, thank you. Um, if, the, if the, I like the idea of stockpiling it in the parking lot. Um, and I would suggest that it be covered so that it stays put we don't we don't know uh, how long it's going to be there and if it's covered it will stay there rather than wash yeah, so usually what the plan is whenever you've got stockpiled materials is that it gets seeded so that it would it, it doesn't erode off and it would be uh, surrounded by uh, a silt sock to make sure that it stays in place and it wasn't just sort of then being a muddy mess across a parking lot. So it'd be surrounded with a silt sock to prevent it from moving and it would uh, it would get seeded so that the grass would grow and it would be stabilized rather than a, um, a tarp or something like that, which uh, could get blown away or, or, or something like that in a heavy storm. Yeah, I mean, if you have an eight month timeline, though, we might have to have a contingency for the winter rains and no seeding. Um, okay, Erin, I see your hands up. I'll get to you, Andre. Um, I was just going to say that, you know, if the commission is comfortable with sort of the general conditions that we've outlined here, um, that we would ask that the pure sky team coordinate with the town should they run into the situation where um, they're actually needing to drill and coordinate with us and let us know if they do and and if they do um, coordinate with Dave and I on you know identifying appropriate upland location or parking lot location and treatment of that material um, uh, after it's been removed um, just because it's it's kind of like nitty gritty details. And um, as long as everybody's clear that we don't want it in the floodplain and we do want it to be placed in an upland location and there is a potential for it to be reused for other um, projects in town that you know staff could coordinate those details with, with Pure Sky. Um, as long as we have a condition in the approval that um, it's not placed in a wetland or resource area. Thanks, Aaron. Andre? Yeah, I think I was uh, actually going along the lines of uh, where where Aaron is going. My question was, um, what you know, if this is a minor administrative change, then uh, the minor administrative change would carry with it uh, exactly. I mean, what we're talking about right now, what the that in the event that uh, it has to be. Um, drilled to the 10 foot by um basically to the uh, uh to be filled uh with concrete as well um will we have those conditions added to uh, uh to the to the approval um rather than uh, just us uh, talk about it i mean that's that's where i was going with it yeah, I would definitely recommend that the commission make a motion with a condition associated with it. And as we have with every change um, and the, the previous six changes that have been made to the project, this is something that I would put into a formal um, a formal letter basically stating that the commission has approved the change subject to the following conditions and, and outline those conditions in writing to the um, project mm -hmm. proponent. Okay, so I think we're looking to do that. Um, 
and the general terms are that the project proponent will communicate with the town about the location of the spoils and the, the treatment and containment of it, um, given that be the circumstances. Um, but I think before we do that, we should take public comment, right? Oh, Alex has another. Okay, well, if there's any public that does wanna comment, just put your hand up now so we get you on the radar. I'll go to you, Alex. Yeah, I am more comfortable with them modifying their plan submitting a modification to their plan rather than and, and having us assume that the circumstance will occur rather than waiting for it to occur and have the company submit a change uh, in their in their plan talking about this and and um, I have no problem with the town working with them if it does occur but I would feel more comfortable if there was something in writing from them um, on this subject. Um, just to clarify, Alex, on, on that statement, are you stating something to the effect of like an as-built to be provided to the town after the construction is complete that would identify the locations where the concrete drillings were located? No, Is that kind of what you're thinking, and maybe I've misunderstood, but I think they're talking about a modification to the plan that's already approved, and and in anticipation of having to uh, drill and put in concrete, that was not in the plan that was originally approved. Correct. Right. So they did submit a plan to us that shows the concrete. Um, okay. I'm, yep. I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah, so we're working with the assumption that it will happen and we're trying to determine the terms in which case it does. So um, I think well, one of my problems with trying to take notes. And I listen. know. Are you sure you want to do that? <laughs> it's double time. If it gets to be too much, just tell me. I'll okay. get better. I'll get um, better. <laughs> so before we, uh, okay, Bruce. Well, I agree with Alex, though, because the plan simply, if I understand it correctly, the plan simply shows where the possible uh, concrete footings might be. But it, I don't think the plan addresses the things we talked about here. And so I think what Alex is saying is some form of a formal letter that spells out, if there's a certain amount of stuff, where is it gonna go? How's it gonna be treated? How's it gonna get there? Who's in charge of it? Okay. So a, a formal, um, so in terms of the conditions, you're saying communicate with the town on the spoil location, um, coordinate with the town on where the locations of the um, concrete footings end up being, and provide us with something in writing that basically states um, that they understand what the expectations of the commission are, and that they've coordinated with the town that the locations will be in these specific designated areas. Beforehand, yeah. Before, yeah. Right, beforehand. Before it happens. Right. Okay, gotcha. Lawrence, okay. do you have a comment? Yeah, I was just going to say, I think uh, the conditions are the, the, the absolute right way to go, just so it's formally set out. I would say that you should provide a decent amount of flexibility um, because we don't know what the spoils are, whether it's just going to be soil or whether it's going to be rock or whether it's going to be crushed rock or, or anything like that. So I would just say that any conditions rather than, because some locations would be more suitable for some spoil than others, I would uh, make sure that there's enough flexibility that uh, we could work with Aaron on the most suitable location for it to go. Rather okay. than designate a specific area, which may only be good for topsoil, but wouldn't be good for rock, uh, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, commissioners, are you comfortable with that or do we need to revisit it once we know what the spoils are like to be it sounds like maybe the parking lot isn't necessarily going to be the only place necessary to to store depending on what kind of material comes out of the ground but um commissioners are you comfortable with um lawrence working with aaron and dave to identify places and conditions of storing the spoils i am yes I am too. I just want to make sure that the administrative record is is complete in that they are modifying the plan that was submitted and approved. 
Yeah, are you are you drafting a motion right now, Erin? Are we gonna take this one off the cuff? Um yeah, that's a that's a um fair fair request, fair ask. Maybe um, maybe seeing it like in, in with the words we can um more easily review it for yeah. our comfort level. Dave, do you okay. have a comment? Yeah, we're just gonna I think a motion is great and and if you move forward with that motion, I think what I'm hearing is that Aaron and Lawrence would work together. There would be some document that would then pass from Pure Sky to the town or from the town to Pure Sky, whichever, that kind of codifies and memorializes your decisions tonight, that then go with the plan. The other thing I wanted to come back to is Bruce said something that kind of resonated with me with, which is let's not expand the footprint here. You know, um, you know, uh, Pure Sky has a certain amount of, of, of square footage to work with within these two uh, array areas. So I, for one, really, I'd love to avoid having, if, if, if they even need to, I mean, this is the other thing is, we're, we're hoping they don't need to go to this alternative. If they do, and there are spoils, be they topsoil or rock or, or gravel, we really don't, I don't really want to spread that outside the easement area. I just, I, I, something about that just does not resonate with me. I agree with Bruce. Why increase the footprint? Um, yeah. So, be, because the whole area is is habitat for terrestrial turtles and grassland birds and all the rest of it. So in my mind, it just complicates it. Um, if we're gonna, if 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 we do need to find a place for those spoils, I I just think, uh, why why go to an upland? Go to the parking lot, and then we'll figure out where you know that's already an impacted area for the last sixty years. Let's and it's and and we can contain it. Then we'll figure out where that can go. So those, okay. those are just my thoughts. Yeah, I agree. And I forgot to mention that, that I think prioritizing it, staying in the project footprint to the extent possible, in addition to containing it on those, um, the parking lot. And, you know, I don't know how to determine whether or not there's a point at which it needs to be um, removed, but um, I trust that Aaron and Dave will work with Lawrence. Yeah, we'll work with Lawrence and his team. Okay, well, unless, okay, so I don't see any hands raised from the public. Um, so please raise them now if you have any comments. Okay, um, all right, commissioners, unless anyone has any final comments, I'm looking for a motion, but we'll give Aaron a few seconds to <laughs> finish type hot off the press. Yeah, and pl please read this and see if there's any recommended changes. I was trying to capture all of the okay. discussion items. Um, I'll just read it in case anyone's having trouble. So we're looking for a motion to approve a minor administrative change to the proposed footings of the solar array at Hickory Ridge. Pure Sky will coordinate and communicate with the town to limit construction footprint, designate an appropriate location for materials to be spread or stored in an upland area on the site, and state in writing that they will abide by these conditions. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't include the notion of storing it at the parking lot. I would say that what that does, though, is it, it does allow for some flexibility for uh, for Aaron and Dave to uh, to work with them on where to store it. I mean, it is an upland site, right? The area of the parking lot. So I kind of read that okay, as to be spread or true. stored I, in an upland area. Fair enough. <laughs> The other thing I might add is move to approve a minor administrative change to the proposed footings. <clears throat> Wouldn't we add maybe in parentheses, if necessary? I mean, we're hoping this isn't even needed. So I don't know. That was certainly the point of all this. <laughs> well, what does that mean? Aaron, excuse me, I didn't raise my hand. Alex, did you have something to say? Yeah, okay. Yeah. You've got administrative change. What, an administrative change? This I don't understand administrative. This is this is not a change in who talks to who. This is right. a, this is a change in the footings. Right. So um, that's to me misleading. 
Yeah, so that's the language that DEP uses when you're not formally amending an order of conditions. Um, so your options are to require a formal amendment, which would reopen the public hearing, or to approve a minor administrative change to the to the permit. So that's that is the sort of state vernacular that's used when there's a change that doesn't require a formal amendment to a permit. Yeah, I wasn't looking for a formal amendment to the permit. <laughs> so well, that's, would... that's, that's the vernacular. That's the term of art. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got it. Andre, did you have something to say? Oh, no, I was I was just going to help with uh, the understanding of it. Yeah. The administrative uh, change is, an, is essentially a, a change to the wording of um, of the uh, of what we've approved. Yeah, yeah, and I like to think about it as a we're essentially putting it on record in an in an administrative fashion that we're we're recording that there's a change, a, a field change to the plan and that we're we're putting it in the record and that we're making an administrative record that there was an, a, a change. Yeah, and because Bruce is new, um, this particular permit predates everyone maybe but Dave, <laughs> but it is, I don't know, we're going on several administrative changes right now. So this is a, this has been a lot of flexibility and sort of a rolling permit, but okay. Unless anybody has any more comments, I'm looking for a, a motion. Let me know if you want me to read it. I'll move to approve the minor administrative change to the proposed footings, if necessary, for the solar arrays at Hickory Ridge. Here, Sky will coordinate and communicate with the town to limit the construction footprint, designate an appropriate location for materials to be spread and st or stored in an upland area on the site, and state in writing that they will abide by these conditions. Anyone for a second? I'll second it. Andre? Aye. I'm sorry, Andre on the first, Bruce on the second, Andre's an I. Alex? Uh, aye. Bruce? Aye. I'm an I. Okay. Thank you, Lawrence. Okay. okay. Um, do you have a preference for what we move to next? I see that um, Eric is here. Should we move to 296? Sure. Oh, I got, yep, yeah, there it is. So I'm going to move Eric into the room. Promote to panelist. Um, and while Eric is coming in, um, over the course of this week, um, I observed that uh, there had been work that had taken place um, at a pond in Amherst. This had been a site that I previously coordinated with the owner on um, relative to a, um, a lily pond, I guess we'll call it, um, that is uh, located on his property. It was a, a created pond that um, decades ago that was basically sort of left to to grow um, unmaintained and it it grew in with all kinds of hydrophytes and sort of started to function as a unmaintained pond um, and uh, so I noticed that um, vegetation was being removed out of the pond um, and so I contacted him and let him know that uh, that the site was in violation and that we had to have him come tonight to um, sort of explain to the Conservation Commission what was going on. Um, as I noted, I did talk with him previously to let him know that if any material was moved out of the pond other than um, invasive species that he would need to file a permit for that. So um, he's here now to, to talk about it. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, do you want me to start? Well, anyway, so I recently bought this house about eight months ago, and we're restoring it. Um, and and on the front of the property, there's a uh, an excuse my naivete for wetlands terms, 
but I, I believe it is a detention pond that is collecting water from around the property through a series of pipes and things. Um, and it has been planted as a lotus pond, we believe since the late 60s, early 70s. I mean, I have a picture of it from 1972. Um, in, in, uh, uh, in 2017, Verde Mae Dale, who's the, the woman who owned the uh, um, house and had it built in the 1950s, passed away, left it to her niece. At 101 years. Yeah. Um, at, and um, uh, the pond was maintained for a year or two after she passed away. But then unfortunately, two years after she passed away, her niece also passed away because she was in her 80s. And... Um, uh, that that then uh, we found some information that the neighbors had been trying to maintain it um, and then that sort of fell off and so it's been left sort of unmaintained for the last three or four years um, and it's so it's grown a lot of excess vegetation and um, and the lotus are getting crowded out um, so um, uh, I seem to have made a mistake and uh, I in a misunderstanding in that we could remove some of the invasive species, which was the uh, multiflora rose that was growing along the back of it, which had sort of eroded the edge of the pond as well. And um, I kind of got, to, I, I didn't understand that I, and it was said that we could remove that by hand, which we did. And then I, there was a miscommunication between, I think me and my girlfriend, and we removed some of the cattails by hand because I was under the impression we could do that. But as soon as I got the message from Aaron, we ceased that. Um, and now I'm here. Um, is that enough? Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, commissioners, do you have any questions for Eric? Okay. So Aaron had communicated with the phone about um, the do's and do nots of restoring the pond in terms of uh, native versus non-native vegetation. So there was a miscommunication. Um, and what are your suggestions for moving forward with this? Um, are you asking me, Michelle, or are you asking Aaron? Or are you asking me? So Aaron, sorry. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, I mean, um, I would suggest that a notice of intent be filed to be able you know, for them to be able to complete the work that they want to do here. Um, it's technically an alteration of a resource area. This would be an alteration um, of a resource area that's governed by our local bylaw. Um, I'm not sure that this would qualify as a state um, resource area. I'm not sure it meets the definition of a state resource area, but I do think under our local bylaw that it meets the definition of an um, isolated vegetated wetland. So um, I would just recommend that we get a notice of intent application in the works so that they can continue to do what they'd like to do with the pond and and just have it be on the record that it's um uh, uh you know approved and that there's a plan of some kind for stabilization and restoration of the pond and and that by the way is our you know we've we've been doing a lot of research in the interim um, we believe we found the the, the company uh, Taylor Davis Landscaping believes they actually built the pond in the late 60s. They're like looking for their records and they maintain the pond for years and years and years. Um, we also got in touch with Alan Snow, who I believe is the tree warden for yeah. Amherst. Um, he also maintained the pond for, <laughs> for a number of years with his wife. Um, and it was the Eddies who live across the street who seem to voluntarily, you know, voluntarily take over uh, maintenance. And then we've also talked to some other people. We talked to Pete Westover, who I, is that? I think he used yes. to be the on the. He was the. Con -con. Yeah, he, was the um, he came over to, to discuss it with us. So we are trying to figure out exactly what we're, we're allowed to do and what we're not allowed to do. And um, the right way. And, to and there's also a bunch of, this is, by the way, Aria Fortier, who's sitting next to me. She's uh, helping me with the project. Uh, so um, 
and um, we're also trying to understand the fact that it's an actively functioning, um, you know, detention pond that's being used to catch, you know, all this stormwater that comes from the house. Like it, there's drains that go into the ground and from the roof and force up to the, um, and and really what we mostly want to do is just make sure that, you know, redo the edge, make sure it doesn't collapse anymore and get rid of not all necessarily, but some of the cattails so that the lilies can grow back in. Um, and then there's a, a number of requests from the town, which I don't fully understand how to incorporate into this, which is that they want, there used to be an overflow that went into a storm drain right in front of the pond. And they would like us to fix that. But obviously that's gonna require digging a hole in the ground in front of the pond. Um, there's also on the other side, um, Jason Skeels, is that his name? Mm -hmm. um, Jason pointed to another point. There's a culvert that goes under the driveway and he believes that the where the culvert comes out that it's detached from the storm drain because it's 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 sunken in like this so he would like me to dig that up and fix that which i'm glad to do both of those things but obviously i don't want to get an infraction from listening to a request from a different part of the town um and then there's um also uh it seems as though the water shutoff for the house was lost about 20 years ago um, and I was told, I said, well, I need a water shutoff for the house. Like it's not safe to have a house without a water shutoff. And I was told, well, just start digging around and you'll be able to find it, but I don't really want to do that. So, um, I'm trying to understand what, what that means, whether I can find some ground radar or something to see if I can actually locate it, you know? Um, so and again, I'm not really accustomed to this. I've never been to a wetlands meeting. I'm not accustomed to the language or the uh, the flow of this. I mean, I'm. I, it, Have you also, reached out to any of the consultants? Um, I, I have, I but un, unfortunate, unfortunately, like two of them. One of them was Ward Smith, um, and another one was was Pete Westover. But those those two people were both kind of in the same conundrum. <laughs> It, it was which is that like is it a detention pond that's functioning as collection of storm water or is it a wetlands or or you know um i think listening to your language it sounds like there is a difference between a state wetlands and a uh, a local wet wetlands in in that maybe because this actually has nothing that flows into it and it doesn't flow out to anything um uh, the only source of water is actually, you know, pipes um, that maybe there's a little more leeway, but I, I'm certainly glad to write up what we want to do and come to meetings and make sure everything is up and up and, co you know, kosher. Um, what we really want is to have a healthy pond in the front of the house is is what we want. And return it to what it yeah what it what it was, was. for like the which, plus which by the way, we've had a number of neighbors, I would say three or four, who have been asking us, what, are you going to return the pond? Is it going to come back? Is the, are the lilies coming we back? A, 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 a yes, a highlight sorry. of South Amherst. Yes, that's what we've been told. It was a very, um, we've heard words like iconic and, and uh, what else? Beloved. Yes. Um, and it seems to hold some significance in the Cambodian community in Amherst in that they used to come and take wedding, wedding pictures. They used to come and take wedding photos in front of it because uh, lotus flowers are considered auspicious um, for weddings. So, you know. So um, I think we, we need to get a, a professional to assist you guys because um I can't sort of put a plan together for you and it sounds okay, like you. you're at a point where you're you're still information gathering but ultimately like once you get all of the pieces of information maybe the information from Taylor Davis or utility information that would help you to sort of figure out where repairs need to be made um then you could kind of is that something that Taylor Davis can do? Like, can they help us put the plan together? Do we need um, not, like, 
like yeah you, you need to Smith, hire somebody to do to put it together there's a lot of complexity going on with the storm drain and potentially digging it out that i think uh, you know yeah. i think we'd recommend is ward, a smith, is ward smith the appropriate person because he seems like a nice enough guy he was just like dude i, I don't know he's like yeah. I don't, you seem like you're in some weird hybrid situation. Maybe getting Taylor Davis to identify some of the original infrastructure around the pond first would help. That's what they're, and we're I mean, that's, in the works. In the right. works. We'll see. <laughs> they they think they might have it, but you know, it was a long time ago. It was the 63. late 60s. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it might also behoove you to get um like a, a surveyor to come in and survey the locations of all the pipe inverts and locations that way in law, the long term you have everything sort of on a plan and you know once you once you file a notice of intent and you identify sort of these are the work tasks we want to do relative to the pond these yeah. are the work tasks we need to do relative to repair these are the work tasks we need to do relative to like a long-term operation and maintenance plan on the pond because in addition to the you know repairs and the vegetation removal you want to do there's going to be ongoing maintenance after all that stuff is done that you're going to have to do on an annual or five-year rolling basis and so that'll be built into the permit okay, and great. Good. Hopefully we can include that in a, ultimately once everything is done in a certificate of compliance that there's an ongoing operation and maintenance associated with this. And once that's done, you don't have to worry about it again. But okay. at this point, and, and it right. really comes down to the fact that it was abandoned and left to grow in as a wetland. If, if that had never happened, we wouldn't be having well, this discussion. I mean, it's, it's part of the reason why I told you the story of how it got abandoned, because I mean, it's, I mean, it's kind of a, a, a sad end to somebody who was like a very you know well known very you know Verdame Dale was basically I mean we're restoring the house with that in mind too you know I mean we Her really love is yes. up in the house and she looks at us yes she watches she's the, watching the renovations <laughs> every decision <laughs> um so that's great well that sounds that all sounds awesome so we're gonna I mean I will say that I mean one thing that stopped me a, a little while ago is we had one other wetlands person who came over uh, he was a hydrologist too and he presented me with a plan for figuring this out which was like 25 or thirty thousand dollars. and yeah. you know I'm just a homeowner I'm not UMass I'm not yeah. <laughs> so but I think Ward Smith I just talked to him the other day and I'll come back to him with all this information and and maybe between him and Taylor Davis we can like figure out a plan that makes sense and that we can then uh present to you know to Which get includes aeration yeah and we because we'd like to do things like aeration and and some you know uh what was it um uh, you know uh, uh you know uh, beneficial bacteria sorry uh you know to help micro get rid of the muck so that it doesn't have to be dredged at some point which uh, you know i'd rather not do um so i think that's enough thank you very much i think that's understandable unless you have any more questions for me um, Andre. Well, I'll um, I'll add a little bit to uh, to that history. Um, oh, you know about oh, the pond? Yes. I I mowed that lawn for Taylor Davis. Oh, did you? I love it. I was his first uh, full time employee. Uh, oh for the for the father. For, no, Taylor Davis. No, no, Bob Davis. Uh, oh, Bob hired, did yeah, I worked for Bob line. Davis initially, and then um, then for Taylor Davis, and uh, mowed that. I remember it uh, quite and well. And Aaron Back. and Michelle know Ryan Davis, I'm sure. <laughs> huh. So I uh, uh, so I remember it well, and I did notice uh, when when there was a bunch of cotton there. Uh, what maybe a month ago or so. Um, and I do remember the lotus pond. Um, it did, I, as I remember, I think it had some cattails there. Um, I, I did find over the years, like these original pictures, like in this one from 72, there's no cattails. This one seems to be from the early 80s. Mm -hmm. That one, there's no cattails. She had, I don't know when. some this, sort of grass, too. This one is from 2000. And you can see there are some cattails in the back there. 
starting, mm -hmm. you yeah. know. Yeah, um, I mean, maybe then, that's a factor of it sort of starting to fill in with emergent wetland rather than right. and losing some depth. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to make my plug for native species here because lotus are not. And, know, you know, know. if you want to consider pond lilies. Um, there, are, there are pond lilies. That is okay. Because we are talking about removing native vegetation and planting it with an exotic species. So well, it it's a, more, <laughs> the, the lotus is still there. So yeah. we, we're not talking about nece necessarily adding lotus. And okay. you know, we did talk about when we looked at it, we did talk about potentially leaving some of the cattails there because they are nice. It's just when they overgrow yeah. into the whole thing, then the waste every year starts yeah. to rate. And before you know it, there won't be any water left. So because um, I was told the pond was about five and a half feet deep by by Alan Snow, who used to go around in waders, um, you know, many years ago. Um, and it's you know you you know there's there's many feet of of just kind of sludge because it doesn't have an output. It yeah. you know, it's just kind of water. Right, it's filling in. in. Okay. Yeah. And then but we'll definitely consider it. There's another grass in there now too, which I don't know what it is and we'll try to get that identified and doesn't seem to spread the same way as the cattails. It seems clumping. to clumping rather than like, you know, so, uh, but I don't know. Yes, I, we will definitely consider that. that. Okay, well, um, I think Aaron's given you a list of consultants, but you're in touch with Ward. So there's, yeah, a bit the of, there's, a, yeah, there's enough complexity here that, yeah, maybe getting in touch with both um, someone who can figure out that inflow outflow situation and then um, getting a plan together with a consultant. Um, so uh, are we just sending them off with a plan, Aaron, or commissioners, do you have any other comments? Yeah, I mean, I would just I would just request that maybe in like 30 days we check back to see where you're at. Um, and, oh, I love a deadline. And in the and in the interim, please, you know, just we cease on cutting it. until we until yeah. we have a, an approved plan because it puts us all in a really tough position. No, 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 no I'm not going to touch it. I already okay. told you as soon as you sent me that message, we stopped immediately. So Thank you. I, we'll mow the lawn around it. But, uh, I'm assuming that's okay, um, as it's been being mowed for whatever um but we won't touch the pond until we get an exact plan figured out and i'll hopefully ward will be uh, you know reasonably enough price that i can deal with it and we'll and hopefully between them and taylor davis we'll get it figured out and um and then i just attend the meeting the same way in a month yeah you can just communicate with me um yeah, via okay. email or just give me an update in in like 30 days of sort of where things stand and you know what you're what you're where you're yeah. at with putting a plan together so we can just keep in touch. That's beautiful. Okay. Okay. Thank Alex, you, you have something real quick? Yeah, I just wanted to thank you for coming before the commission. Yeah. Um, I hope this is a pleasant journey for you. Yeah, thank you. It has been a mixed bag. <laughs> um, it, is a very, it is a very complex house I, that was built by a very complex woman. I, <laughs> A native of of a, I grew up in Amherst, Massachusetts. My my grandparents were incredibly involved with um, land conservation and environmental. You know, uh, they started the second CSA in the country, uh, which is Brookfield Farm, um, and you know have large trails named after them. So so I am so completely um environmentally aware and and that has always um been you know keeping things um happy and um <laughs> <laughs> i don't know uh, um but not not going in and bulldozing things and doing crazy things but restoring things no i mean to give you been a, to, to give you a sense of the restoration of the house we're saving pretty much everything, all the wood inside the house is all being saved, cat, you know, numbered, cataloged, sanded, and put back. Like, I mean, we're, we're, we're restoring it, not renovating it. So, um, so hopefully that's what the pond will look like too. And, but. Sounds great. Good luck. You got your work cut out for you. Okay. So you'll, communi <laughs> you'll communicate again. with Aaron and sorry, Alex, um, and we'll be seeing you back here with a plan, hopefully in hand. Beautiful. Alex, do you want to say the last thing? Just thank you again for coming before us. And uh, yeah, and we appreciate working with you. To be yeah, thank you for your help. Very, 
So have, have a pleasant journey. Awesome. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye, guys. Stop by sometime. Yeah, stop by sometime. <laughs> okay. Bye. Okay. All right. So, One more thing. A emergency cert. Um, yes. So this is for, um, there's a uh, former gas station that's behind the old North Amherst Library. And um, basically they did some investigation of the structure and deemed that it was unsafe and want to take it down before the library sort of comes online um, to make sure that hazardous materials and um, the unsafe structure is taken down. So um, Dave and I, uh, Dave approved the issuance of the emergency certification and we just need to ratify that this evening. So just a motion to ratify the emergency cert for 24 Montague Road. Can I ask a question? Sure. I drove by there and I, the life of me, I couldn't figure out what the connection was to any wetland. The it's within the 200 foot buffer or 200 foot riverfront area of the Mill River, so um, well, yeah, I, yeah, I couldn't see it just <laughs> walking around, but okay, I take yeah. your word for it. Yep, it is yeah. very industrial. <laughs> yeah, it is. Okay, um, all right, looking for a motion then. Uh, so moved. Okay, Alex, with a motion, second. Second. Andre with a second. Bruce? Aye. Andre? Aye. Alex? Aye. And I'm an aye. That is Joe Sacco's old garage. He used to pump gas there. That I would don't... be so convenient. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. I remember driving across from Cumberland Farms to get my gas there. Yeah. When I first got my license. <laughs> there was a year where I was his number one customer. How Did you that? get like an award or something? How do you know that? <laughs> no, I, in, in terms of the number of times my car was in there. But I don't know if the gas tanks are still on the ground. I, I don't yeah. think so. Well, it's Anyways, exciting to see that space I'm sad, renovated. I'm sad yeah. to see that building come down, but it will yeah. be a benefit to the library, which yeah. just looks terrific. Yeah. Chris? Um, is it possible to stay on and ask you a question when other people leave, or can we make an appointment for me to call you tomorrow to, to ask several questions? Are you, Are you talking, talking to me or Aaron? Aaron. Um, yeah, I would. I would prefer if we could talk maybe sometime tomorrow, Bruce. And you're welcome to just call me at the office when okay, it's convenient. I'll do that. Oh, I think oh. I have a nine to ten, and I have a eleven to twelve. But other than that, I'm in I'll the office. I'll call you at ten. Perfect, Alex. Uh, I hope we're not closing the meeting, Aaron. There's one more item. Um, so the conservation restriction item was tabled by Dave for um, uh, upcoming meeting. And then we covered the letter of support for fish and wildlife at the front end. So I think we're good unless I missed anything else. I don't think so. And just, I do have some context about the conservation restriction that the IRS did a a big change, which has a tight deadline um, for donation and bargain sale easements. And as Dave said, it is really sort of administrative. Um, the organization I worked for didn't have to deal with it, but a lot of the lawyers were actually recommending not doing anything might be the best course of events. So I, I heard what he was saying with that, but um, just for some context, it's not, I don't think it's going to have any conservation implications that I would be worried about from my personal standpoint. So the only other thing, um, and I don't know if Bruce has another question or if his hand is oh, still up, but, no, I, uh, oh, that's okay. I just, um, it, we might want to just check if there's any general public comment from anybody, because there are a couple folks still in the room okay, before yeah, we close. Okay, I see a few people. Um, I do have an item of business before we go. Okay. Oh, okay. I don't see any hands, Alex, so why don't you go ahead with that? Um, I would like to make a motion that we update our wetland regulations. And there have been, it's been a year since the, uh, they were last updated and there have been a number of um, changes and uh, in the way we do business that need to be codified. And there's also been 
perhaps 15 items that Aaron has identified that need to be uh, updated. This is not a big piece of work. We're not talking about an overhaul. We're talking about updating. Okay, it sounds like you already have a list in mind. And have you talked to Aaron about it already? Like, is this something that could I had a conversation with Aaron and I asked her several times, um, when was an appropriate time to bring this up? And she said to me most recently at the end of the meeting under other business. Okay, and here we are. Here we um, are. Okay, so do you propose that uh, we review this at another meeting, um, like in bullet form or, you know, maybe Alex and Aaron could present the, the items specifically? Is that, I mean, do you have a proposal for how to handle that? Yeah, I mean, I would suggest that we, we make track changes to the existing um, Word document and then also come up with a list of what the changes, identifying the changes and, and why we're recommending that they be changed. Um, and I'm not sure if we'll be ready by the next meeting, but we'll, Alex and I can coordinate outside of the meeting to try to get that ball rolling so that we can talk about it. Um, okay. Do you think we next... could pass it around like we did our land use plan? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Yep. All right. Well, that's exciting. Thank you, Alex, for being on top of that. Okay. Any last call for public comment? Please raise your hand. Okay. I see none. And I think we've addressed all of our items. So unless anyone has something else to say, I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. I second. Andre with the motion, Bruce with the second. I mean, sorry, Alex. Andre? Aye. Bruce? Aye. Alex? Aye. And I'm an aye. You run a good meeting. Good job, Michelle. <laughs> Thanks. Yay. Thanks, Alex. Yeah. I've got good support, which is really, it's just about watching the clock, right? <laughs> <laughs> Did great. Okay. Thanks for taking this on. Yeah, and if anyone wants to volunteer to be vice chair, please just let Aaron know. I didn't want to like call anyone out there, but um... <laughs> I'd like to look into it. Okay, great. Um, sounds good. Okay, and hopefully we'll have Jason next time. Um, and yeah, enjoy your four minutes before nine o'clock. <laughs> it's <your> time. <laughs> okay. Bye, guys. Have a good night. Good night. night. Aaron, would you stay on and help me spell a name? Sure. Okay, bye, guys. Oh, I can leave, yes. So how do you spell Laura's last name? Uh, P-A-G-L-I-A-R-U-L-O. Let me read it back to you. P-A-G-L-I-A-R-U-L-O. Yes, I believe that's correct. Okay. And I... Um, I kind of write, I kind of wrote notes on the back of an envelope. And uh, oh. I, tried, I tried typing. I've got to learn how to do this better. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll write up what I've got. Um, I'm kind of done for today, so it won't be tonight. Okay. But, but I, um, I'll send you a draft.